Michael looked up at Victor and shielded his eyes as the torchlight flooded the room. He sat there shaking and panting, very confused, very scared. Victor, what, what did you do? What is happening to me? He said, with his blood-soaked face and chest which still had pieces of flesh stuck to it. Everything is alright, Michael. This is all very normal. We have brought you another meal. I know everything is very confusing right now, and I understand how your hunger has consumed you. Another meal? Michael said as his mouth began to water. The hunger surged up inside him once again. He struggled to hold on to some form of control. He felt like an animal, a beast that could not be tamed. This is a dangerous time for us all, Michael. When we first awaken, we tend to have an animalistic hunger in us that may take a little time to sedate. Your ceremony and transformation was not like that of the others. It weakened me greatly for some time and you were out for two nights before you finally awoke and had your first meal. That man, by the way, was a child murderer. He had been evading police after doing unspeakable acts to children. Do not pity him. I swear to you, I would never give you the life of an innocent. Victor explained to Michael with a calm tone. Michael still sat on the cold, dusty cell floor, panting and shaking but calming down slightly. He suddenly remembered flashes of what played out in his mind, the flashes from his past mixed with what he is now. There was a demon living within him, melded with his very essence, yet he could still form his own thoughts. The hunger roared once again. Uh, uh, this hunger... Will it ever stop? He screamed up. Yes, my friend. The first hunger is always the worst. Your body needs to be nourished to regain its proper strength. Like I said, I've brought you another meal. Hopefully this one will satiate your hunger. It is not common for us to devour the entire meal as you did. I have not seen a reaction like this since I myself had awakened into my rebirth, replied Victor. With that, Victor shoved in another man. This man was heavier than the last. He had a scruffy reddish beard and blue eyes. They quickly shut the door behind the man and locked it. V Victor, wait! Michael started, but was interrupted when the man suddenly attacked him. The man had rushed him and firmly planted his knee right into Michael's left eye. There was no pain. The man continued to kick and punch at Michael with a fury that would have put any normal person down, but Michael just slowly rose to his feet only swaying from the gravity of the blows. As Michael looked up at the man, he once again could see the blood flowing through his body, leading to a heart that was black in the center. This one was not as black as the last man. Only a tinge of darkness settled in the center as the rhythmic burst of bright red shot out from the glowing shape of the man's heart. It was really quite beautiful. I ain't gonna fucking die, you cannibal fuck! The man shouted as he threw another blow towards Michael's face. With a blur of speed and movement, the man's hand was caught in mid-swing. The room began to change into a tinted red color as the man's face contorted into a mixture of fear and pain. A low growl echoed throughout the chamber. W what the fuck are you, man? The man said in a shaky voice. With a squeeze and a twist, Michael plucked off the man's forearm like a leg off a roasted chicken. The man howled in pain as he was shoved hard against the wall. Michael began to rip the flesh off the arm and devour it, tossing it aside when he was finished and closed in for more. Michael fed as the man screamed in helpless agony, at times ripping parts off to feed on and other times just eating him as the man slowly faded towards death, convulsing from shock. In the end, all that remained was the man's right leg and most of his organs, aside from his liver and heart. Michael sat back against the stone wall once more, the room ripe with the scent of blood. His mind felt much clearer than it had before, the hunger no longer raging throughout his body. The door to the cell creaked back open and Victor entered. Ah, Michael, do you feel better now? I see you did not finish this one. Yeah, it, yeah... I, I guess so. Tell me, what what did you mean by it's not common to finish the entire meal and since your rebirth? Michael asked. Well, do you recall the story of when I was tricked into becoming what I am now? When I awoke, 
which was only a couple of hours later, unlike you, who had been dead for two whole days, I was a pure beast, nearly an animal. I devoured many people in the coven and slaughtered all of them. I saved Catherine for last to punish her for her treachery. By the time I had killed her, my hunger was satiated, and I had only tortured her to a slow and painful death, only licking my fingers clean of her blood when I had finished my work. Normally, when I bring another into this existence, they will merely drink the blood from the wound they first make, and that is enough. But I suspect that Ball seen something more in you as I had, or perhaps he and I seen it together. I believe I was weakened because more of Ball had infused with you than he normally puts forth when I make my children, but time will tell whether that is true or not. Your strength and abilities will become apparent very soon. Come, Michael. Let's get you cleaned up and into some clothes, Victor said as he outstretched his hand to help Michael to his feet. You have much to learn, much to see. Michael was led back to his room, feeling much more like himself than he did when he had first woke from his nightmare-infested death slumber. Stepping into the shower to clean the blood and gore from his body, he had time to reflect. Ball was right. There was no sense in holding on to the past. None of that mattered now. He has been reborn. He has began a new life completely. He felt young, strong. The colors around him were so vibrant that they nearly had a glow to them. His mind seemed to work faster than it had before, as did his reflexes as was displayed to him by catching the man's fist in midair. Michael had never been much of a fighter, only being in one losing fight in grade school his entire life. He first didn't know how he should react when the man began to beat on him, but the hunger had taken control and he moved like lightning. Michael stepped out of the shower and put on another suit that had been set out for him. He looked himself over in the mirror with a chuckle. <laughs> I guess I can still see my reflection. He laughed to himself. He looked himself over. He was slightly paler than before, but looked younger and stronger. He noticed that any and all of the aches and pains he had felt with his age before were gone. He smiled in the mirror and walked from the bathroom, a new man.